We're good. Okay, today, guys, we're going to talk about the exposure triangle. How many of you heard of this term before? Raise your hand. Okay, so what is it? Keely, what is the exposure triangle? It's the triangle where it shows like ISO and um, uh, aperture and shutter speed. Very good. So there are three elements in this exposure <laughs> triangle. Okay. So this is what the exposure triangle looks like. Just like what Keely said, you've got the ISO. Okay. And then she said you've got the shutter speed. And then you have the aperture. So the first thing we will learn is the aperture. Okay, how many of you have heard of that word before? Okay, who would like to define it? Michelle. Pretty much, uh, it determines how much light is exposed. There we go. So how much light, or the amount of light that's let into the camera. So when we use this mode in our camera, what kind of photo do we get? Carla? A depth of field. Depth of field. Very good. So we can just put here, depth of field. What is, what is depth of field, though? Keely? When the subject is clear and the background is like blurry. Very good. So the subject is clear and the background is blurry. So you guys have already had the opportunity to take some of these photos, but throughout this semester, you're gonna to continue to use this technique, um, whether it's, you know, 10 tips for taking great photos, diagonal photos, you know, every type of uh, assignment that we do in here, you'll always have the opportunity to use these past techniques that you've learned, okay? Like depth of field and aperture, okay? Now, um, as far as aperture is concerned, how, how is it measured on our cameras? What is it called? Is there anybody else other than these people? <laughs> yes. F-stop. Very good. So the F-stop is equivalent to the aperture. Okay, so what is, what is an example of an F-stop? The same people all, all, all the time. Huh? Okay, Carla, what is it? Like What's F, an example? Like F22. F22. So that's a, that's a number. What what does that determine? That's the F size. Okay. So what's the size of your 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 um, lens at that point? Is it big or small? Big. Um, it, um, it, uh, Careful. It's a trick question. Small. Small. Yeah. So the hole is small. Now, if you did an f, let's say 5.6, then what? It would be bigger. Almost bigger. Good. So that means less light and more light, right? Okay. And this is how you achieve that depth of field that we're talking about. Okay. Now let's move on. Remember this exposure triangle. They have to uh, join together. Depth of field always goes with aperture. What goes with shutter speed? Anybody else I can pick on over here? How about this side? Yes. Uh, motion blur. Motion blur. Okay. Very good. Now, in order to achieve a motion blur, we have to do something with the shutter speed, right? Okay. So, Ireland, what do we do to um, achieve a motion blur? The shutter speed has to be set for faster. Faster? And the object has to be in motion. Are you sure? Not really. No. <laughs> Anybody want to agree or disagree? Uh, it has it? to be slower. 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 Your shutter speed has to be slower because it opens the shutter for a longer period of time and you're going to move in front of it to get that blur. So you want to have a slow shutter speed in order to get that motion. Okay? All right, so shutter speed and motion blur go hand in hand. They go together. Okay, and then we also, you know, we also talk about uh, freeze frame photos, which your shutter speed's fast, and you can catch people in the air or doing some kind of action, and they're frozen. Okay, so that's another 
um, technique that we would use uh, for shutter speed. All right, so finally we've got ISO. Somebody knew, what does ISO mean? Uh, international yes, International Standards Organization. Okay, now this is a part of exposure because what does it do to your photo when you manipulate that? Anybody on this side? <laughs> Nick? What does ISO do to your photo? <laughs> Grainy or noisy, very good. You look like you didn't know the answer, but you know the answer. Okay, noise and grain. So when you change your ISO anywhere from 100 to 1600, you can make your photo more grainier or less grainy. Okay, so make sure you guys memorize this exposure triangle, because it will appear on your final examples. Okay, this will be embedded. Who knows what embedded means? It's inside. It's inside. It's like grained in stone in your brains. Because I'm going to repeat this and repeat it. Okay? Um, does anybody have any questions about the, the exposure triangle? Okay, these are the fundamentals of photography which will you'll use which you'll use a lot. Okay? Question? No. Okay. So to um, finalize everything out, I wanted to recap and show you a little clip on YouTube, YouTube. that um, gives you another perspective on how they go about um, doing the exposure triangle. So do you want to just keep rolling on this? This is about five minutes, I think. Five minutes. Is that what? I already got you. Yeah, what do you do there? So everybody quiet down. Somebody get the lights? I got it. I'm now explaining the so called exposure triangle. Well, the exposure triangle is made up of three things it's the aperture, the shutter, and ISO. Now, to understand this, let me explain to you how light enters our camera and makes a picture. When it goes into the lens, it has to pass through something called an aperture. After it goes through the aperture, it passes through the shutter, and finally it gets to the sensor in your camera. Now the sensor is sort of like film used to be. It gathers light and it makes a photo. So let's talk about these things one at a time. So the first thing is aperture. Now aperture is sort of like a hole inside your lens. Now it's not a hole, it's sort of like a hole, and what I mean is it's always open. It can get larger or smaller, and it controls the quantity of light that goes through the lens. So if the aperture has a wide opening, lots of light is going through. If it has a small opening, not so much light is going through. Now the second thing is called the shutter. Now the shutter is not like the aperture because it's either open or closed. So it's not open all the time. And the difference is the shutter can open and close at different speeds. So it controls the duration of the light. So it can open up for a few seconds or a fraction of a second. So again, the shutter controls the duration of light. Now, if it's open a long time, lots of light goes through. If it's open for a short time, less light goes through. Well, let's talk about how our shutter and aperture work together to keep things balanced. Now remember, the stuff that I'm talking about today, the specific numbers, well, they're all relative. So please don't email and say that those numbers don't work out because I'm trying to teach you some principles and the numbers won't work out. They're just for illustrative purposes. So again, let's talk about how the aperture and shutter work together as a team to keep our light balanced so we get a proper exposure. Well, let's say that we have a really wide open aperture. Well, that's going to let through a lot of light. When we have a lot of light coming through our lens, we need to balance that somehow. Well, we can use a really fast shutter speed. And that fast shutter speed is going to balance out how much light is coming through. Now, if we had the exact opposite, let's say that we had a really small aperture open. Well, less light is coming through the lens. And if we have less light coming through the lens, well, we need to take our shutter speed and slow it down to make up for a lower quantity of light. Now, we can do this in a couple of ways. We have some modes on our camera that help us calculate how to set the shutter speed or the aperture light. The first one is called this. It's aperture priority mode. On a Canon, it's AV on your mode dial. And that stands for aperture value. 
on Nikon and other cameras is just called A. That's what, what we happens. have, Nikons. And what yeah. happens here is you set your camera's aperture value, in other words, how wide or how small the aperture opening is, and then the camera will figure out the proper shutter speed, and things will be in balance. Now, you can do the exact opposite by using the shutter priority mode. Now, on a Canon camera, this is TV for time value, and on other cameras, it's just S for shutter. And in this mode, what you do is you set your shutter speed to a specific speed, and then the camera will figure out how large or how small the aperture opening should be. So, so far, we've talked about aperture and shutter and how those two things work together to keep things in balance. Now, what about ISO? How does that work? Well, ISO controls our camera's sensitivity. Now, let me uh, talk to you about it like this. Let's pretend you and I decide to go see a movie in the middle of the day. Well, we're running a little bit late, so we go to the ticket counter, grab our tickets to make from the theater just after the movie has started. Well, unfortunately, we can't see a thing and we can't find our seats because it's too dark in the theater. So we wait a few minutes, our eyes adjust, we find a couple of seats and we settle in and watch our movie. After the movie was finished, we decided to go have some coffee and chat about the film. When we walk outside, we're blinded by the bright sunlight and it takes our eyes to adjust. Well, ISO is a lot like our eyes in that it can be more or less sensitive to light. So ISO so that causes the noisy and the gradient of the photo. 3200 that allows our sensor to shoot in low light situations, just like our eyes can see in a dark theater. And ISO numbers that are very low, like ISO 100 or 200, allow our camera to be less sensitive to light, so we can shoot in bright, sunny days. Well, now that uh, shows us that we have three things that work together to control exposure. Aperture, shutter, and ISO. Now you might be asking yourself, what's more important to set your camera's shutter speed to a certain setting or your camera's aperture value to a certain setting? Well, it really depends on what you're shooting. For those people that really uh, care about depth of field and controlling what's in focus in their images, well, aperture is most important. So you can watch episode 12 for more information about depth of field. And for people that are shooting sports or action photos, well, shutter is going to be most important because it controls motion. Now you can check out episode 15 where we talk about uh, using a slower shutter speed and the panning technique.